All right, so now we're recording. Uh, this is Jeremy Schulman, and we're going to cover uh, an introduction and maybe uh, an intermediate level um, exposure to XPath functions. So what we have up on the screen right now is the file that was shared with me earlier. I've kind of collapsed all of the um, elements so I can kind of see the top level of all of the data. But if I wanted to expand everything, I would just go in and say expand all so we could see all the data that's sitting inside of this file. Now, as I go through this tutorial, if you guys have questions, please save them to the end. Um, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, I'm going to try to cover the tutorial in about 30 minutes, and then we can do some Q&A um, at the bottom of the hour. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, swap over to my uh, Python console, and I'm going to bring in this, in this file. And the first thing that I want to do when I bring that in is I want to go find information uh, about my devices. So again, if I were to collapse uh, collapse everything here, so I'm going to get folding collapse all, and then I'm going to go to devices. And I'll just pick one of these devices. I can see that I have a, an element called platform and it has a name. So first exercise I'm gonna do is just kind of pull out the platform name values. All right, so here we have my uh, Python console and I'm gonna use uh, interactive Python as a way to uh, you know work with the code. So I'm also gonna be using the LXML uh, package for all of my XPath uh, usage or XML usage. So I'm gonna say uh, from LM LXML uh, import eTree. And then I'm going to uh, load the file that we had before. So here I'm just uh, looking for my files and uh, if I hit enter and hit tap. I want the file where I've already removed the namespaces. So if you uh, hadn't seen the video on how to remove namespaces, that's up on my YouTube, uh, my YouTube page and you can watch that. So right now we've got an element tree and I'm going to use an XPath expression um, I can see where my current root is. I can see that I'm at the top, which is devices. So if I go back to uh, the file, you can see my top level is devices. And if I wanted to uh, show you all of each of the device elements, I can see how I have a number of device elements. And if I wanted to take a length of that, I can see I have nine device elements. Now, if I wanted to find the uh, platform uh, element, this is gonna give me the, the platforms. And if I wanted to get the names of those platforms, these will give me the name elements, but really what I want is the text of those names. And so I can see that I've got all of these uh, text values. So the first thing I wanna show you is um, filtering, some basic filtering. For example, if I wanted to find only devices that had a platform name that matched exactly one of these values, for example, iOS XE, what I would do is I would say, I want to find a device that, that matches some criteria. And so the criteria is put inside these brackets. So here I'm going to say, I want to match where the platform name is equal to, for example, iOS uh, XR. Now, what that's going to do is it's gonna give us the device elements because that's what we've asked for. And what's in the brackets is really just a matching criteria. So if I wanted to know the device names, I could do the same kind of trick here where I can see these are the two devices that are iOS XR. Okay. Now I could say uh, iOS XE, do the same kind of trick, iOS XE, right? But what if I wanted to find um, any device whose platform you know, began with iOS. For example, maybe I wanted to find iOS XR and I wanted to find iOS XE. So this is where we're going to get into the first type of functions that we have available to us. These are built-in functions. And when we talk about built-in functions, um, there are two shall we say, libraries of built-in functions. Uh, one is called the um, 1.0 functions and the other one is called the 2.0 functions. So if you were to go to, um, for example, W3Schools and look at their function list, 
or go online and, and Google for XPath functions, some of the functions you'll find are 2.0 and some of them are 1.0. And, and for now, the only functions that are provided in libxml are the 1.0. So we kind of have to be a little careful about what we choose to use. I know uh, that one of those functions is, is contains. So what we could do is I could say the criteria that I want to match is I'm going to use this function called contains. And the first thing that you give it is the thing that you want to check. And the second thing is the string value that you want to look for. So I could say iOS. And then again, I could say uh, the name of the device text. Oops. And make sure you get your brackets to close. And if you don't spell it correctly, like I did, this is contains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Contains platform name ls. Got to get the bracket in the right place. Name text. Great. Okay. So now we know that these devices, their platform contains iOS. We could check that simply by um, looking at those values. For example, I want to first filter on those values, and then I actually want to put, I say, I want the platform name text value. So I can see that that, that filter actually works. So that's contains. Just like Python contains, it works the same way. There's another function called starts with. So you could do starts with. Same kind of result. So if we wanted to find all of the devices that didn't start with something, we can prefix all of this with the not function or the not operator. So we can see that these are the other types of devices that are not iOS. They, we've got two Cisco, NXOS, and ASA. So, uh, you know, there are string functions that we have available to us. Um, there are number functions, or there's a, a different set of categories of functions that we have, and I will go through some of those in a bit more detail. But I just wanted to show you some, some basic functions that allow you to find data. Now, uh, there's another category of functions which are called extensions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to um, my web browser, and we're going to look at some of these extensions. So extensions, there are some extensions that are built in to libxml because it uses the uh, native uh, system libraries for XML and XSLT. And so one of these is regular expressions. So you can see that this is a regular expressions uh, library here. And there's two things that you need to kind of pay attention to. One is the namespace, which is this value here. And then the functions that you have. So let's say we wanted to use the match function. Okay. So it tells you essentially, you know, what, what it's going to find. It gives you the function definitions here. And so let's say that I wanted to use this, this uh, regular expression kind of in the same way that I was using it to find the platform names, you know, iOS, XE versus uh, XR. So in order to do that, um, I need to tell libxml that I want to use uh, this library. So the way you do this is I'm going to copy this namespace. OK. So let's go back here. And I'm going to say um, re namespace is equal to. And the way this works is you say, what, what is the namespace prefix that you want to use? And then what is the known actual namespace value. So I'm just setting up a dictionary. There's nothing really magical about the dictionary itself. But in order to use the dictionary or to use these functions, I'm going to prefix the function name with re and then invoke the function. So uh, for example, I'm going to say uh, xpath. I'm just going to hit up arrow here. All right, so we have the basics, and we want to say 
uh, we want to check platform name and but what we want to do is we want to use a regular expression so I'm going to say match so this is the thing that I want to match and if I give it a regular expression like iOS for example that should match it now if I forget to tell it about the regular expression uh, namespace, you're gonna get an error. This is what it's gonna look like. So what you have to do is you have to tell the XPath that I wanna use some namespaces uh, that I've defined. So you get this, this positive result. So now this is regular expression. This is a really simple regular expression. There's, no, there's nothing really interesting about it, but I'll get into an interesting one here in a sec. So again, if I wanted to look at the, the matched criteria, I could say, uh, give me the platform name text and I can see that. Now, let's do some, some more fun stuff. So if I wanted to say iOS, um, you know, XE or iOS XR, you know, we can you start using our regular expressions or we wanted to use a regular expression that looked like this. We could say, you know, XE or XR, same kind of thing. So that's one way of using uh, regular expression matching. Um, you can give the, the RE uh, match function another parameter, which is whether or not you want to ignore case. So that matches because I'm, I'm correct casing it. Or if I wanted to say, you know, iOS, it'll match because I'm ignoring case. And if I take this out, no match. So um, using uh, re match is you know a really good way to find things, uh, you know using a, a more powerful matching criteria. So as as network engineers, I believe most folks are are somewhat familiar with regular expressions, and so you'll be able to take full advantage of the regular expressions uh, finding things with XPath. All right, so uh, let's do some some things that are a little bit more interesting. Um, one of the things that you know I like to do is try to find IP addresses. So what you can do is use a third type of functions with uh, XML and XPath, which are functions that you define. You can define your own functions. So I've built a function library that allows us to use the IP address module. So if, if people are familiar with you know the IP address module, we can use it to you know tell us whether or not IP addresses are a host or a network. We can see whether or not they fit into um, subnets and so forth. So uh, I'm going to flip back over to my uh, PyCharm, and uh, what I'll do is I'll show you uh, this library. Let's do this. All right. So uh, hopefully that can be seen. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. I think I can. So these functions uh, exist in this library and it will allow us to find IP addresses or networks or host values. And we can say whether or not we want IPv4, or IPv6. You can even do subnet checking, like is it in a subnet? All right, so the way that I'm gonna you know, demonstrate this is I'm gonna say uh, from LXML uh, path in, XPath uh, IP address import IP uh, namespace. So if you look at IP namespace, what it's doing is it's defining an IP address IP namespace and it's using uh, this namespace which is bound to the library um, that I created. So now if I wanted to use this, I could say uh, in my eTree, I want to look for anything uh, in anything uh, in my uh, document that happens to be uh, any form of IP address. Now I have to do namespace is equal to IPNS. And what this is going to do is it's going to find every single element that has something that looks like an IP address. And if I wanted to uh, you know, show what that was, I could look at the text of that thing. And I can see that these are all the IP addresses that are found inside my entire document. 
my XML structure. Now you can see some of them are um, subnets or networks and some of them are hosts. So I could, for example, just say, I wanna look for host values and not um, network. So I could say host. I can see I've got these host values. And let's say that I wanna get rid of, for example, I don't want um, default gateway. So I could say, um, and um, the value is uh, not equal to zero, 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 zero. So we can get rid of that. So I can get rid of all of the zeros. So that's a way to find IP addresses using a function, you know, your own kind of custom fu function library. Now, let's say that um, I don't wanna look at the text values, but I actually wanted these uh, elements. So these are gonna give us all the elements that we have here. And we can see that we have all different types of elements. You know, we have these next hop elements, we have IP addresses and net masks. You know, so it depends really what you want to look for. Let's say that I only want to look for address values. So rather than saying, you know, splat here, I'm just going to say I want um, IP address values that are hosts. And if I wanted to look at their text values, I could see what the text values are. Okay. And again, if I wanted to get rid of um, the zeros, I would do this. Now, let's say I wanted to know, you know, where these values were located, you know, actually in my document. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually get the elements. So I'm gonna say uh, IP adders. So I have these address elements. And if I just picked one, for example, and I look at this text value, that's that's the text value. Now, if I wanted to find, um, oops, I'm actually not showing you my code. This is terrible. Been going on and on and not showing you the code. All right, sorry about that. So um, this is going back to the very last thing that I did. Um, how I find address elements that have an IP host and don't match um, the uh, global gateway. So again, I apologize about flipping around and not getting my view screen correct. This is the first Twitch and I'll get better at this. All right, so I have my IP addresses, oops, IP adders, and this is my text value. Now, if I wanted to know where this actual element existed in my document, I could use something called uh, get element path. This is gonna tell me exactly where in my document this, this address happens to be. Now, the way you can use this is I'm gonna copy this, and now I'm going to flip over to my um, Let's see, I'm going to flip over to my PyCharm and I'm going to go to the document. So I'm making sure I'm doing this. Okay. So inside of PyCharm, what I can do is I can select the top level node and then I can say evaluate X path. I can drop in that path. I can click evaluate and it's going to take me exactly to the place in my document where this IP address was found. So I can see exactly it's this device. Okay, so far so good. All right, so I have all these IP addresses. And again, if I wanted to look at each of those IP addresses, I could say um, in IP addresses, I just wanna look at the text value. These are all my text values. All right. So going back to this IP, you know, uh, extension library, let's say I wanted to find all the values that matched a certain subnet because we could use, um, you know, contains or regular expression for these addresses. For example, I could say, you know, for, uh, for my devices that have an address that has a value, you know, say contains or even starts with uh, 172,
starts with the value 172. Uh, let's see. Let's do this device address text. So none of the device addresses started with 172. That makes sense. All right. So let's look through the config of the device. So if I said go through the config, oh, I'm doing it again. Sorry. I am at least watching the uh, the chat now. Okay. So now if we do uh, XPath and device, and I want to look through the device config for um, address values. I can see I have a whole bunch of address values. And I'm going to look at the text. So what this is telling me is, is I'm finding things that are called address but are not actually an IP address. And it turns out that what I really need to look for is primary address because there's some addresses that are structures of data and not the actual value itself. So if I wanted to find just the primary addresses of the config, and I'll pick one just to kind of show you this. So uh, IP adders, IP adders zero, right? And then eTree uh, get, uh, let's do get IP adders zero. So this is telling me that this particular IP address is found on this particular interface. So I'm going to carefully flip between screens again. Okay. Click here, go evaluate XPath. Evaluate. Okay, and I'm gonna go find it. So there's the value, and you can kind of see my breadcrumb trail here. And I can see this is on uh, Gigabit Ethernet 1 of this device, Distro RTR1. Now I'm gonna flip back to the code. All right, so if I looked at IP adders zero, that is that element. And sure enough, if I said XPath, go up my uh, an ancestor access to my device and get the name of the device, I can see that it is you know that, that device. And if I wanted to find the actual interface name for that address, I could go up you know, the ancestor to the IP which will take me to this element. And then I go up one more to get to the interface, which is gonna be that gigabit ethernet. And I can get its name and get its text. And I can see that that's gigabit ethernet one. So, you know, again, to reinforce why XML and XPath, it allows you to find things. And then once you find something, you can kind of behave like um, a Google map, you know, where you are here and kind of look around contextually uh, for what you want to find. All right. So now that we have all these IP addresses, um, if we go back to the original um, thing that I was doing here, find all these IP addresses. What we might say is I want to find IP addresses in, in a given subnet, you know, so let's, let's again look at all of the values. And if I wanted to find all the values that began in a given subnet, I, I have a different, a couple different options. You know, I could use contains or starts with, I could use a regular expression. So let's say I wanted to use a regular expression. I could say re match the value of this address with some regular expression. Again, I have to say namespaces is going to be my re namespace. So that regular expression could be, for example, uh, 172.31. And then I'm going to say uh, anything. I'll see if this works. So I've got two that match 172.31. And if I wanted to see what that was, I could look at the text. And I can say, OK, that's correct. Or if I wanted to look at, um, you know, maybe uh, 172.31 or 16, I could say, uh, let's see if this will work, 16. So, you know, that gives you kind of the benefit of using regular expression versus 
contains or or uh, starts with. So that's kind of nice. But then we can kind of go through, uh, you know, a more interesting example of finding um, values, you know, using subnetting. So let's see if I can find, I want to find um, anything, you know, in my XML document that uh, ha that is in a subnet. And that subnet is going to be uh, 172. 172.16.100.0/22. The reason I why I like using IPython so much is it tells me when I've closed and captured everything. So, all right, I need to make sure that I'm using my namespace is IPNS. Uh, argument. Oh yeah, the value and, and that's on that. Okay. So it told me that I found a whole bunch of things that were in that subnet. So I don't know what all these things are. So, you know, I, I get a sense of what they are by their tags. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna correlate these things, uh, you know, into tags so I can kind of manipulate them a little bit better. So I'm gonna say from collections, import uh, default. Uh, and so I'm going to say these are my at, you know, uh, you know, in 172. These are all of my elements that are in this in this particular subnet. And then I'm going to say, um, you know, by tag is default dict list. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, you know, for each element that's in this collection that I just um, pulled back, I'm going to say by tag is uh, I'm going to take the tag. So the tag is going to give me the string of the thing that I found. And I'm just going to append it to this list. And then I can see, you know, what I've got here. You know, I've got these four different tags uh, of data. And if I wanted to look at uh, one of them, like say IP adder, you know, I've got some here. And if I wanted to look at one of them and see what it was is, all right, I've, I've got some text there. So that looks like it's in a subnet. And uh, let's see what address is. Okay, that's interesting. So at this point, I'm going to see what this is. You know, get get element path. All right. So this happens to be you know something that was found in a VLAN HSRP list. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see what IP adders are. IP adder. Okay. So those are actually configs. That's interesting. Uh, IP prefix and IP next hop, I'm going to guess is probably part of the routing table. IP prefix. Yeah, that's part of the prefix. It's part of the live data. And IP next hop is probably also. Oops. Yeah, live data. Okay. So hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of some of the things that you can do with XML and XPath and. Um, and you know, comparing the different uses of built-in functions versus functions that you have um, that are part of the the library systems versus uh, you know you can create your own uh, functions like I did with IP uh, with the IP address system. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to show you that I think is such a common um, use case that I'm going to demonstrate it pretty quickly. Uh, inside the data, I know that there's this live status, uh, and inside that live status there's a MAC address table. So if I wanted to go find that, for example, I could say, I, I know for for some for a fact that there's something called, there, there are hardware, hardware adders. Uh, inside this data structure. These are all my hardware addresses. And if I picked one again, like this, I can see that this is kind of live data for hardware addresses. So, you know, if you're looking for what's in my Mac address table, for example, and you pulled this back, what we've got is this live, live status kind of thing. And we know that um, for a given element, if we go up and we look at everything in there, these are, this is kind of your, your record, if you will, of your, your ARP table. 
right, for this particular thing. So if I wanted to more or less, quote unquote, dump my ARP table, I could say, well, find all of the, the hardware addresses, which I've done. And then I want to get the record of data, you know, for each of the elements in that. So if I, if I made a little function called, you know, XML to dict, and I give it an element, and I say, uh, I want to return the uh, tag and the uh, text value uh, for E and Ellie. I could, uh, what this really does is this kind of translates an element to a dictionary, right? So I could say hardware address list zero path. So, you know, that, that gives me a record of data and I can see that this IP address and this MAC address are on this interface, right? And so knowing this, I could say, you know, for a hardware adder in a hardware adder list, I could say my ARP, uh, my ARP record is going to be uh, XML the dict for this hardware adder. Go back up and get everything that's in that record. Of course, now you know uh, I also want to know the the device that it's on. So I could say you know from this hardware address element, I'm going to uh, go up my ancestor and ancestor to device give me the name value so this is going to be my uh, device name and then I could you know print this out and say uh, example dev name and then we want to say uh, arp rec interface slash Let's do ARP rec. Oh no, that is the uh, interface. Uh, and we're gonna say has the uh, ARP rec IP and has the ARP rec Mac. Oh, well, in this case, it would just be the uh, hardware address text value. Unmatched bracket. Do, 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 do. because this is a bracket. All right, so you can kind of see how we can dump our table, right? So if we go back through that, we, we could, you know, filter based on subnets. So again, if I wanted to go back to the, uh, kind of the whole thing, I could do something like this. Uh, let's go back and say, really what I want to do is find not the hard the ARP table um, hardware, but the not the hardware address, but the actual IP. So I could say XPath. Now what we want to do is we want to say uh, maybe we're going to be a little bit more specific. We're going to say in the device uh, live. Let me see what it is again. It was live data or something like that. I'm just looking in the file real quick. Let's see, this is live status. Live status ARP, and this is my IP. Okay, so those are all the IPs. And if I look for the text value, those are all the text values. So here, what we can do is we can say, well, I wanna filter uh, my IPs, but only if the value is in a subnet. So we could say uh, IP in subnet, the value here and the value of the subnet. So let's say that we want this to be, you know, uh, 172.31.1.1. Um, I know we could have done that with, with not in subnet, but that's okay. Namespace is IP. So I can see that I've got three of these values that are in that subnet. And um, and then we can go through that whole process just to dump the ARP table that matched those IP addresses. So uh, I'm going to take a stop here because I want to see if anybody's got any questions. Ah, okay. I'm going to answer some questions now. All right. What is the meaning of the double slash slash? Is it like skip everything? Yes. Okay. 
So let me explain that in a little bit more detail. But the short answer is it, it skips everything. Um, I'm going to go over to the web browser and show you what are called IP address accesses. Let me see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So you have these accesses, and one of them you saw me use was ancestor. And, and I didn't show child or descendant, but the, the, the child is everything that's, um, you know, kind of in a linear under the element. For example, when I did the ARP record, when I did the, the star, that was every child. That's kind of a shorthand for every child. And if you want to know the, um, the other shorthands, we go to the syntax. And you can kind of see where you're doing these node selections, where slash slash selects from the current node and everything down. So it's sort of like descendant or self. So I could do something like this by way of example. I could say, you know, in my device config, I want to find from here, device config, anywhere there is an address. Okay. Now, if I wanted to look at each of where they were located, I would do print et get element path le. And you can see that some of them are under interface gigabit. You know, they're, they're at this kind of hierarchy. And in other cases, they're in completely different hierarchies. So you, you can use slash slash to, you know, kind of do a depth search and not really care where things are. You don't have to be very, very specific. Um, ah, doing it again. Sorry. Doing it again. All right. So here we can see we're doing, you know, find everything under my config that, that is an address. And if we wanted to look at all the elements, you can see that, you know, where it found the address element is is anywhere under the config because I started with the config and said de do a depth search. Now, if I wanted to uh, say, well, I want to say config interfaces, interface, config interface slash slash address. You can see now I'm only, I started at the interface and I said, I don't really care where it is, but go find it. And this is particularly useful because in this, you can see in this case that there are these tags called gigabit ethernet and loopback, right? And so if you wanted to look through your data structure and you didn't want to have to say, well, check for things called interface ethernet, check for things called loopback, check for things called management. You know, I, I don't care where they are. I don't care if it's a VLAN or a management or an ethernet. I want to find wherever I find a, 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 an address in fact, I might say even a primary address, right? So I can see only gigabit ethernets have a primary address. VLANs have some other kind of address. They've got, you know, this HSRP type of address. All right, so hopefully that answered that question. Um, other questions? What do you think about XML namespaces? I always find them hard to deal with. Yeah, so I always get rid of them. Um, you know, there's a function that's in this tutorial um, GitHub repo, and I just strip all the namespaces out. There are, there, are, there are only two really, really good reasons to use namespacing. One is when you're doing functions, like I'm showing you in this tutorial. The other one has to do with the data that comes back from uh, the device. So I'm now going to carefully go back to my PyCharm and I will show you um, what I mean. The file that you're looking at right now has all of the namespaces stripped out. Now I'm going to open up the file that has namespaces in it. And this is slowly, my PyCharm editor is slowly telling me that this file 
There's a lot of broken XML. So you can see like these are the namespaces here. If I wanted to find things that had Yang in them, so there's Yang, there's Yang, there's Yang, Yang, Yang. I'm trying to see if there's an interface with Yang in it. Yeah, so the reason why things become interesting is because if you're trying to find an element in your data structure and you know that element was specifically um, organized by uh, a library, like say, I want to find all my IPv6 elements, but only if they're Yang defined elements, it's a good reason to leave um, you know, your namespace is in there. So you can say, well, you know, I want to find Yang IPv6 versus, for example, you know, maybe other tags that are called IPv6 that are not Yang. And, th and that I've seen that happen in um, some device output, like there's open config output that, or, or I should say that there's, um, there's config that comes back from devices that has both open config and non-open config data in it. And so in that case, there are tags called interface. And some of the interfaces have a namespace of open config and some of them have a namespace of the vendor. And so that's, you know, that's another use case where, where namespaces might be useful, but by and large, I just strip them all out because if you don't, using XPath becomes almost unusable. So my general advice is get rid of namespaces and then use namespaces only for functions. That's a good question. All right, other questions. All right, so since we've got a little bit more time, I'm gonna show you a few more function libraries that I think are pretty cool. So I'm going to the web browser and I'm gonna to go to the built-in libraries. So inside the built-in libraries, you saw we use regular expression. There is one called math. Math is pretty cool. Uh, inside of math, there is are these functions called highest and lowest and min and max. So one of the things that I was looking at inside of the data was interface statistics, right? So now I'm gonna go back to the code, PyCharm, and if I look for uh, statistics, statistics, right? You know, we've got these statistics, right? We've got all of these numbers. What if I wanted to find the statistic that had the highest number in it, right? So of these statistics, I've got, you know, in octets and all these out octets. And I want, I'm like, well, I really want to find, you know, what things got the most. This is a good use for, um, you know, this library. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll go back to my code, I'm checking, make sure I got the code. All right. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to say, uh, find me everything that is statistic statistics. All right, so I have my stats list, stats list zero. And if I do a XML to dict on my stats list zero, you can see like I've got some stats. Now they're all strings. That's okay. You know, um, the cool thing about XML and XPath is it will um, duct type the uh, value. So it'll find, you know, it'll treat these numbers uh, as numbers. You know, for example, if I wanted to find everything that was non-zero uh, for this record, for example, I could say, find me everything here, uh, everything that's in here, let's see, uh, everything that's here, give me a sec, uh, everything that is greater than zero. Yeah, no, I want all my child. Uh, find me children whose value is greater than zero. All right, so these are non-zero values. And if I wanted to look at the value themselves, I could look at the value. So I can see that those are our non-zero values. This is really super handy if you're trying to figure out, you know, whether or not you've got error counters or not error counters. You know, you can find uh, non, you know, non-zero stuff really fast. But let's say that I wanted to find the maximum value. 
So here, what I would end up doing is I would use that math function, and that math function was um, called highest. And what I want is the highest of, of the things that are in this st statistics. So now, I don't think I have a math. Okay, so I'm gonna make a math namespace, and I'll just call this math. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste the namespace from that web page, which I'm not showing you, but it's that. So um, now I'm gonna do stats list xpath find uh, the math highest child element, highest uh, child element. Yes, highest. There's a way to do this. Uh, all right, and then I want to say highest math, highest. Namespace math. Mm, give me a sec, I'll figure it out. I, I did this earlier. I could have sworn it was this. There we go, out octets. So it's telling me of all of those things, the out, uh, the, uh, out elements is the highest. And I can see the value. Now, if I just wanted the value and not the element, I could just say max. And that would give me the value. All right. Is there any way to skip exactly one child instead of any number, like your example with interface? Is there a way to skip exactly one child? Skipping a child. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by skipping a child, but I will show you. Um, I'll show you how you can skip things in general or pick specific things. For example, um, if I have an element tree and I wanna say um, for my device, let's say I have some number of devices. I can pick a specific device, say the first device. Well, let's, let's do this just so we can see them all. So I have all these devices. Ah, sorry, device name. So I have all these devices and if I wanted to pick the first device in XPath, numbers start or uh, lists start at one. And if I wanted to uh, pick the last one, the way this works is there is a there's a function called position, and that will return the position of this element amongst its node set. So I could say find the one that is last. I can see that that's last. This is super helpful if you're looking at access uh, ACLs and you want to find your ACL rule and you want to find your last ACL rule and then you want to look at that last ACL rule to see whether or not there's like a drop or a permit. So um, this is how you can find, find that. So you could, for example, use the same technique to find, to look at you know, kind of elements in a list. So I could say, I want to skip the first one and I want to skip the last one. I could say the position is greater than one and the position is less than last. Oops. Position. Device position greater than one and position is uh, less than last. This is gonna give me, you know, I skipped the first one and I skipped the last one. So that's how you can kind of skip things. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. Is there a way to skip exactly one child instead of any number of children? Um, so I'm not sure if that answered your question. Suppose Nornir returns XML data as string. When I pass it to strip NS function, throws an error, do I need to convert that string to an XML? Yes, yes you do. And the way that you can do that is the following. Um, 
I'll go through the process as if I had um, not loaded the file the, the way I did with, with eTree. So um, I have my files here in this uh, XML files folder. So I'm gonna just take some content, uh, open XML files. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use the strip version just, just for the sake of ease here for a second. So I'm gonna read this and I have this content and this content is string, sorry, string. So what you can do is you can say um, eTree from string content. And that gives you, you know, your element like that. And then you could, you could then strip it. So let's say you get really bad garbage XML. So now I'm gonna do the use case where that, that content is actually not from the strip, so you can see this process. So uh, I'm gonna take the original content, right? And if I try to do eTree from string content, it's gonna throw an error because it's like, this is terrible, this is absolutely terrible. So then we're gonna do uh, eTree XML parser uh, resolve it, or uh, recover recover is true parser. And then we're gonna say eTree from string content parser is parser. Okay, so then we have this element tree. Now we've got these these namespaces in here. And so then I would take the from XML helper import uh, strip namespace and then ET is equal to strip namespace ET. And now we have no more, no more namespaces. All right, uh, so that was that question. Errors are not really helpful. <laughs> All right, um, other questions you guys have? Let's see if I had any other cool examples I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, I think, I think that covers most of it. You know, I wanted to show, you know, uh, built-in functions, um, extension functions that came with the uh, built-in libraries and then an example of, of using your own functions. Now, if anybody is really, really interested in writing their own XML XPath functions, I can do a tutorial on you know how you write one of those, like how I built that, that library. I meant XML validator, no insight into what was broken, just get it right. Yes, I will save this video. I'll probably cut it up and put it up on, um, up on YouTube. XPath validator error was broken. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is a way to see what was broken inside the XML when you parse it, if you kind of catch the exception and look through it. I haven't done that myself because, it, you know, just dealing with all that is very aggravating. So I just strip it and be done with it, um, so. All right, well, I hope this has been uh, interesting and useful. Um, I will cut the videos and put them up on YouTube. Um, if anybody has other questions or interests or would like to have me go through your XML and you know answer your specific questions. Please go and share that uh, XML content through the uh, GitHub repo. I just do a pull request, I'll bring it in and then I can analyze it and uh, we'll go from there. All right, well thanks everybody and uh, that will be the end of the stream.